uncertainty about, uh, about some of the issues. So I think I would actually play the ball back to, uh, um, to you guys um, and, um, and give you the opportunity now to ask questions about, uh, about Creative Commons licensing. Because clearly you've seen the name Creative Commons was mentioned many times over the last couple of days. And um, perhaps uh, I think most of you um, attended the film yesterday and I uh, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, to have you there and to uh, kind of launch our um, Creative Commons uh, Johannesburg shadow team, which uh, we have great hopes for um, in terms of uh, making Creative Commons South Africa work better. Um, just in terms of contextualizing, you, we have also tweeted about that. Uh, I think it's important for everybody to understand that the movie that you saw yesterday we showed mainly for, for two reasons, um, and that is um, that we believe first um, that it is important to see that actually there is filmmakers out there that do um, kind of uh, distribute their movies under a Creative Commons license. So now this movie that you saw yesterday is a movie that is freely available, um, that uh, you can download, that you can share with others, um, and that you can, uh, can organize an event around like we did, for example. Uh, and this is the kind of thing, new business models that we want to see to evolve, even in areas where people struggle to see business models for Creative Commons. So I believe the, the movie, how the movie came about, is uh, that uh, the filmmakers decided to start what, the, what uh, is called a Kickstarter initiative, to actually get the money together to create that movie. So instead of relying on people to spend money on going to the movies and, and paying back at a later stage, uh, what the cost of pre uh, producing that movie is. Um, the filmmakers in this case decided, no, we want to actually make a movie about a very interesting topic. Um, and uh, we believe that there's a lot of people interested perhaps in, in, uh, in uh, supporting us in that. And they started an initiative for asking for money up front and uh, that enabled them to make a movie that we can now uh, share more freely. Um, the second reason why we showed that movie is also because it is uh, what comes through in the narrative of the movie is, uh, I think, quite clearly that uh, um, many people do believe that something is broken with the copyright system um, and that copyright reform is needed. Um, and there is uh, Creative Commons, um, many people in the Creative, moment, uh, Creative Commons movements are working in this area and they actually do share this vision and they say, you know, um, something is not working with copyright in the digital age. Um, and um, we believe we have a good patch, what we call a patch, to make some of those shortcomings of copyright uh, uh, go away in the short run, but that does not away, do away with the necessity to um, more uh, fundamentally think about the concept of copyright in the digital age, whether it's working or not. And that came through quite clearly yesterday. Now, I think what is important, and then I also stop talking, perhaps give the uh, microphone over to Kelsey or to you, uh, should you have questions, what is important is there's two ways of doing that essentially. So uh, we have what uh, we, we talked about that uh, over lunch and some people call it, I can't remember the name now, I call them boundary pushers for now. So we need these kind of boundary pushers that we saw yesterday in the movie that are actually going beyond of what the law uh, allows and they're actually breaking the law. So what they did was in violation of the law, even though they throughout the movie did say that they believe they should not be uh, um, they should not, not go to prison or they should not receive a sentence what, what they for what they were doing, and uh, they had the feeling that uh, people were applying American laws in the country that is not American. I think it was pretty clear to everybody from the outset what they are doing there is not within the confines of copyright law. And um, so the, these people are people like that are necessary. I think they otherwise not, nothing is ever going to change. But just for the record, I think this is not how Creative Commons operates. Creative Commons has a different approach, right? Creative Commons tries to build up on what the law currently. Allows. We try to find a license that actually works within the confines of copyright and tries to find legal ways of more flexibly dealing with copyright. So while at the same time, we often take our heads off as academics, for example, and then we kind of almost side with the other side and we say, you know what, actually, just finding a patch like a license is not enough. We need to actually more fundamentally question copyright laws and we make suggestions as to how we can actually inform the legislative process, dealing with institutions like the World Intellectual Property Organization. So it was only a couple of months ago that Creative Commons, after a long internal fight, decided we actually do put out an official statement that we are more than just the curator of a license, more than just putting forward a license that people can use, we actually want to make a stand and say, we know a lot about copyright law. We are a network of copyright specialists and we don't agree 
with the way that copyright law works these days. Creative Commons is one way of dealing with that, but at the same time, please give us the freedom of also inquiring and looking into ways of uh, coming up with better copyright law. So the disclaimer that now coming the lawyer in me, the disclaimer for yesterday is that I think if someone in the room has understood yesterday as Creative Commons promoting piracy, this is not the case, but at the same time, I think a lot of what came through in this movie yesterday was very important to consider, and please join us in this very, very interesting kind of journey that we're having here in both making copyright laws as they are work, and much more interestingly, I think, even changing copyright laws. Okay? Kelsey, you want to add anything to that? Uh, I'm very much going to take my CT hat off right now, just yes, to make that clear. And I put it on my Shovel Worth Foundation uh, flash grant hat on. Uh, so Shovel Worth Foundation has granted me a small amount of money to study territorial rights. And territorial rights are a very important issue in the developing world. I feel uh, very strongly that you can't create an environment where you're creating a desire around a product like the film and then not allow us access to have those films, and then complain about piracy. Those are, that's a loop that just can't work anymore. And that's why I showed the film. But being territorial rights is more interesting. Territorial rights are effectively, and I think you guys, everyone in this room has certain experience of when you, you get a YouTube video, or you're trying to download something off Kindle, you're trying to use a legal mechanism in order to get the content. Uh, that is some piece of creator content and it says not available in your country, which means that they haven't negotiated the licenses in your specific region or country yet. Um, personally, I believe that we live in a digital age where this information should be free to flowed and that creators should be able to get income from uh, the people who want to buy their product and this should be something that is easier to get, which is what I'm studying. <laughs> right, so anybody who wants to Ask either a very specific question about Creative Commons. I heard a very interesting question yesterday where someone said, okay, I want to use Creative Commons images, uh, license images in my Wikipedia post or something. And for some reason, I do not get information about where do I, how do I actually attribute? So where must I attribute that? And uh, I think he, he has more knowledge in, in how, how the actual Wikimedia and Wikipedia entry editing process works. So I will look into these kind of things. Um, but I also am afraid sometimes I just can't give you like a clear cut answer to that. It's like uh, when, when a, can I say, when a traffic light says uh, um, it, it's red, don't, don't, don't cross the street. It doesn't really tell you where exactly you have to stand by the street. You can, answer, you can stand five meters from the curb or you can stand like uh, ten meters from the curb. Just don't cross the road. So I believe there is so much flexibility and I think in, in, in many cases it just comes, uh, comes back to common sense. Um, and if, if there's still sort of in um, kind of this uh, in, in, um, uncertainty about how to do this. This is what Creative Commons, local Creative Commons teams are for. Get in touch with one, if there is one in your country. If there is none, and we have too many countries in Africa where, is, where there is none, then uh, drop me an email. I'm happy to help you with, with these kind of questions. Thanks. Um, I enjoyed the movie last night. I was just wondering um, from a, because those guys have that kind of like, screw you approach and, and like you say they are the boundary benders, whatever you call it, but pushers. Pushers, there you go. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, about from a legal perspective, their argument was that they weren't doing anything illegal because all they did was create the biggest website on the internet and then other people populated it with illegally copyrighted or illegal materials that breached copyright. Is, is that, firstly, is that what their argument is? And secondly, I was just wondering, I mean, you're talking about uh, kind of new modes of thinking about copyright. Uh, how then, if I'm a musician or something and I write uh, an album, everyone is torrenting it and uh, not paying for it, how, how then does the creator make any money? I mean, there's, I suppose there's things like that flatter button that I was talking about where you load money on and you can flatter different artists, etc., and then the money is spread evenly, but um, what do you guys think about, uh, if you want to not do away with copyright, but do you think that creators should have some copyright and make some money, and if so, how do they do that? I take copyright and I'll do it. <clears throat> Let me start with the, with the second question first, because that's the, unless you're uh, 
I, I think that's more interesting for everybody here um, than the legal kind of yeah. um, discussion. So I think the second one is um, is the exciting one. Sure. Um, that's the one about business models, right? So, so um, no, absolutely. The copy copyright is is an important like facilitator for creativity still. So you can't do away with that. It's, um, there is a lot of people that do only create because at the end of the day they are promised by law that there is a return, a financial return. Yeah. To so that and to tap into this kind of creativity, which is kind of the most the more professional creativity, the more like last century creativity in a way, um, you don't want to you want don't want to lose that along the way. So there is this kind of incentive argument for for, for creativity. Um, I don't think this captures the full uh, kind of breadth of creativity that happens on the internet. So there is everything, I mean, this applies to most people here in the room, this kind of amateurish, and I don't I mean amateurish in a worse quality, I mean the, the amateurish in a way not for profit, not for money making uh, creativity. And idealistic. Type. Exactly. So this, and, and we need to be, and, and this is something that the internet only has enabled, right? So, and it's actually what is probably the, the majority of creativity that is happening. So we have a law that actually speaks to the minority of the cases. And when that happens, the law is detached, the law in the book is detached from the law on the ground. Then you need to start thinking about, about new ways. So this is the kind of first, first answer to that. Now the second way is, second um, argument or the second point that I want to drive home here is that even if you are after the money in that, or at least after recouping costs, and that is a, like if you invest something and you want to not lose out at the end of the day, that is an absolute fair um, kind of uh, driving uh, element. But um, I just think of, the, there's so many art, uh, examples on the internet how you can make money with giving some of your money away. We call that uh, many times, uh, oftentimes it's referred to as premium as freemium models. Yeah. Uh, you can talk to the Sierra Buller guys, this is what they are looking into, yeah. giving some stuff away, but then uh, giving like premium uh, kind of services that are attached to that way, it changes. The model that changes here is instead of giving the core product or charging for the core product and giving add-ons away for free, which was the kind of previous model, now we are changing into a time where we are giving oftentimes our core product away and then we charge for add-ons, right? Yeah. Um, and um, I give you an example from the music industry. Um, so one way um, uh, uh, musicians used to make money is that they advertised a lot, that they got word out about the music that they were making. And then eventually they were making money from people going to concerts. That is the like original way of making money, right? Now that has been turned around in a way, at least like in the, for the big artists, that they actually make most of the money with certain CDs, and they just do the concert kind of uh, circus um, for the sake of doing it, right? So, and we are kind of seeing perhaps a, where we well, we are arguing that perhaps we should just go back to these kind of roots and say, giving your CDs away. Even if they are giving away, or it means also allowing it to be downloaded for free on, like, say, Pirate, yeah. <coughs> Pirate Bay or something, will eventually still grow your user base or your fan base, and that uh, will, uh, will allow you to make more money at the end. Um, then they'll come to your gigs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Legal questions. I think I'm not a, laws differ from country to country. Copyright laws are national, but they are kind of sort of harmonized. I believe that, and it was against the law in Sweden, what they did because they did not commit the copyright infringement themselves, but it was contributory infringement. They actually allowed others to make, to, to infringe. Yeah. Okay. And with the newer cases, um, that seems to be enough for courts to say that this is copyright. Okay. okay. I also just found that the person you need for them. Bring up the PDF. It's fine, but just go back to the page. So uh, so this is a document called The Power of Open, which uh, is an older document now and we are trying to update it. Um, but it's a list of uh, case studies and examples of various ways that open business models. And I'll tweet this link out uh, so you can see it. It includes things like Al Jazeera, uh, the TED Talks. TED Talks are a classic example. Uh, when the TED Talks first launched as a conference, they had a really difficult time filling seats, if you can imagine. Uh, and when they were able to convince them to release the videos for free, uh, then it very immediately flipped over into the world phenomenon that we all see and appreciate and use now. Uh, on a more local context, I will send it out. But can you just go back to the previous page? Okay, it's fine. Uh, Tobias and I were in uh, Maputo last month. Um, 
And one of the things that struck me is an example from the uh, Zimbabwe uh, musicians who were there. It was a whole bunch of musicians who were there to instruct, uh, teach them about what we do about uh, Creative Commons, and they got lots of other lessons. But they were saying that what they do, uh, because piracy is rampant in Zimbabwe, they said they can't even record the song, and within hours it's on the streets. Like it's just trying to maintain selling of a CD, they've given up on that. So they give their music to uh, the taxi, the guys who drive the taxis, and then the taxis play their song, and that's how they generate crowds to come to their shows. Um, so that's a, a very African example of uh, what, what is happening here. Any other questions? Have you filled the time? <laughs> Aina, have you filled the time more or less? Yeah, <laughs> 